Right, so uh, this question is asking us to sketch and it's a good question because it's going to involve uh, a lot of things about quadratic equations. So one of the important concepts that we're going to revise on this question is completing the square method. Remember what I told you when I was teaching you about this method, I said, this method is very important because uh, mostly when you've been told or before they ask you to sketch any quadratic equation, they'll first ask you to uh, use completing the square method to express any to express to, to express that given quadratic equation in the format which looks like this one. Then when you manage to express it, that's when now you can find the x and the y intercepts. And then after finding that, you'll be asked to find the turning point. And then after finding the turning point, you have to state whether it's a maximum or a minimum, or I mean, whether it has a maximum or a minimum value. And you also need to find the value of that minimum or maximum. And then from there, now you can sketch. So the first step in sketching the quadratic equation, first you express it in this format. Yeah, there's a very simple uh, method that you can use, but according to this question, we have been asked to first um, express it in this format and then sketch. Okay, so I remember in the session that we had, I showed you how to use the completing the square method. So here I'm just going to be applying it. Okay. So I'm going to do it step by step. So we have our f of x being equal to 2x squared minus 4x plus 5. So what we do next here is to factor out the 2. We factorize 2 from the first two terms. So f of x is therefore going to be equal to 2. Then open brackets, x squared minus. So when factorize 2 from 4, we are going to get... Uh, two, so get two x. Then you have plus five. So this part should be in such a way that if you multiply this two throughout the brackets, you still get back to that. So any step that we are going to take here should take us back to this first um, equation if simplified. So our next step is now to, um, to find half of this term that we have here. So how do we find half of this? We just divide it by two. So that half we are going to find, um, okay, let me be writing what I'm saying. So we have f of x being equal to two. We open uh, square brackets. So we're going to write x squared there. And then half of negative two is negative one. So I'm going to write negative one and I'll square it. So this same negative one squared, I'm going to subtract it there. I'll say minus negative one squared. And then from there, I'm going to say minus two X. I'll put my minus two X there. Then I'll close the brackets Then say plus five. So F of X is therefore going to be equal to, I'll write my two outside and then I'll still open these same kinds of brackets. And then I'll complete the square of this part. What that means is that I'm going to write X and negative one in brackets. Then I'll square this part. So I'll write what is in brackets and X in, um, in brackets and then square. And then from there, I'll say minus. So negative one squared will give me what? Positive one. So I'm going to write it there. And then I'll um, immediately get rid of that and I'll close the brackets. Then this part here, I'll write it outside. So now from there, the next thing that we need to do here is uh, you multiply these two throughout the brackets there. So two times uh, this part here, you're going to get two open brackets, x minus one squared. Two times negative one here, you're going to get negative two and then you say plus five. So the next thing that you need to do here is to add this. Sorry, uh, <coughs> sorry, Mr. Jamba. Yes. Sorry, could you just uh, go a bit back on the second stage, the third stage? Like, how did you, uh, how you came uh, to two and bracket x minus one squared? Which x minus one squared? Uh, this part the, fourth, the fourth, yes. Okay. 
So what I just did here is, okay, let me just erase even this part. So we're saying f of x is therefore going to be equal to So um, we said two and then open the square brackets. So now I'm trying to complete the square of the first two terms here. So I'm just going to write this X and the negative one uh, that is um, in brackets there. I'll put them in brackets. So I'll write X and negative one. That is why it's very important to make sure that the sign which you have there is the sign that is inside there in the brackets. Yeah, so it's important to note that. So if you have a plus there, this would have been a positive one. But in this case, we have a minus, meaning this is going to be a minus one. And then after writing a minus one and X there, you square them. And then from there, I'll write a minus. This minus I've written here is this part here. And then negative one squared will give me what? Positive one. Then I'll close the brackets. I'll completely omit this part because I know that if I simplify this expression here in brackets, at one point, I'm going to have positive two X that is going to, um, I, I mean, uh, at one point, I'm going to have negative two X in this expression. So in other words, it's like, I've just pushed this negative two X inside the brackets there. That's what it means. When you expand this part, you discover that you have this part there. And then the next thing that I'm going to write is, my positive five outside. So from there, this now becomes simple. What you just need to do is, uh, you multiply these two throughout the brackets there. So two times this part, you get two open brackets, X minus one squared. Two times negative one, you're getting negative two. Then you have positive five outside. And then we have F of X being equal to, so you have two open brackets, X minus one squared. Then when you add uh, negative two and positive five, you're getting positive three. So as simple as this. So we have managed to express it in this format, which they wanted us to express it. I'm sure you've seen, we have managed. So now after doing that, the question is asking us to find what? Or oh, it's saying, hence sketch the graph showing clearly the X and Y intercepts. So now, how do you find the X and Y intercepts? So the Y intercept is simply just what you have there. So the Y intercept, let me start with this because it's the simplest to find. So the Y intercept we have is Y is equal to <coughs> Five. You can either say f of x is equal to five or y is equal to five. Or in other words, it's found by replacing uh, x with zero in this expression, because we know to say in the y-axis, the value of x is what is zero. So when you put zero where there's x there and there, the answer that you just remain with is five. That's what it means. That's how you find the y-intercept. Then we move on to the x-intercept. So how do you find the x-intercept? So the x-intercept, we know that the x-intercept, know that in the x-axis, the value of y is equal to what? Zero. So in the X axis, the value of Y is equal to zero. So meaning you get the same expression. You can either get this one or you can get the final answer there. And then while there is Y, meaning while there's F of X there, you can replace it with what? With a zero. So what I mean is I'm going to have something like this. So while this FX, I'm putting zero and then I'm sorry, this is equal to two open brackets, X minus one squared plus three. So I'll take this three to the other side of the equal sign so that I have three is equal to two open brackets, X minus one squared. Then I'll, oh, this would be negative three. 
Then I'll divide everything by two so that I have negative three over two being equal to x minus one squared. So now what happens if I square both sides of this equation? So you discover that this side will remain x, x minus one. Then this other side will be this plus or minus the square root of negative three over two. Remember what I told you, what is the square root of a negative number? The square root of a negative number gives you a complex number, which is an imaginary number. So, and if you remember on the concepts of roots, there's a point which I mentioned, <coughs> I said, if any given quadratic equation, I erased that, if any given quadratic equation has uh, imaginary roots, it means that it does not cut the x-axis at any point, meaning it has no x-intercept. So this tells us to say our given quadratic equation has no x-intercept because it doesn't cut the x-axis at any point. How have I known? It's because what I have there is negative. The discriminant is negative. That's what it means. Meaning it has no real roots. It has imaginary or complex real roots. Uh, I mean, complex roots. Okay. So it's as simple as that. So the next thing that we've been asked to find is the turning point. So we have managed to find the x and the y intercept. But how do you find the turning point? So for the turning point, this is simple. So for the turning point, one thing you just need to understand is that you just, the, the, I mean, the, the value of x at the turning point is found by equating this um, number there to zero. So when you, I mean, this function inside the brackets to zero. So when you equate x minus one to zero, the value of x at the turning point would be one. And then how do you find the value of y at the turning point? So the turning point is what we're finding. So the value of x were, were found it to be one. And then how do you find the value of y at the turning point? So the value of y is simply just the number that you have here. And this is the one that we call the maximum or the minimum, depending on the value of a that you have. So if a is greater than zero, it means that the given quadratic equation is has a minimum value. And then if a is less than zero, it means that it has a maximum value. But in this case, the value of a here is two, which is greater than zero, meaning our given quadratic equation has a minimum value because um, the value of a is greater than zero, meaning it has a minimum value. So we expect our curve to um, we expect our curve to come out like this because this part here is not negative. If it's negative, the curve would have come out like that. But since it's positive the curve will be minimum, it will have a minimum value. And then that minimum value that the curve has is positive three. And this is the turning point. This is the value of y at the turning point. So you put your three there. Or you can find this same three by replacing one where there is x in the main equation there. So when you replace, when you replace this one that you have found as the value of x, uh, you replace it in the main equation, the answer that you are going to get should be three. And that is how you can test if uh, your steps here that you have made here when completing the square are correct. You simply just put the value of X there in the main equation. You see if you are going to get this as your answer. Let's try, you put one there. You're going to get two minus uh, four. When you put one there and there, so you're going to have two minus four plus five. So two minus four, the answer is negative. Two plus five, the answer is positive three. So you can see that we have gotten the same positive three, which is outside there. So this tells us to say our work is correct. So yeah, it tells us that our work is correct. So the turning point is one comma three. So now after finding the turning point, we can state whether it has a maximum value or a minimum value. How do you know that? It's by checking the coefficient of x squared. So the coefficient of x squared here is two, it's positive two, meaning it's greater than zero. 
So positive two is greater than zero. And this means that it has a minimum value. And if the coefficient of x squared is less than zero, it means that it has a maximum value. But in this case, we have positive two and it's greater than zero, meaning it has a minimum value there. Okay, so we know that it has a minimum value. So now let us quickly go and sketch this curve. So sketching is very simple when you have found the right figures, the right numbers. I think this space is enough for us to sketch. Okay, so um, I'm going to um, write my X, Y plane. So this is what we have. I'll put f of x here because that's what we have this side. So we have in the x-axis we have one, then two. In the y-axis we have one, two, three, four. So we have one, two, three, four. Oh, sorry, look at where I'm writing the numbers from. Of one, two, three, four. So the turning point is this part, this part there. So I'm going to write it here. You say this one, comma, three. So it's somewhere there. And then I'll also add five there because that is our y intercept. So this is our turning point. Then our y intercept is there. So we expect our curve to come out like this. And turn from there, go like that. So our turning point is one comma three. Yeah, so this is our turning point. So it's as simple as that because there's nothing else that we have to add since it's not cutting the X axis. So this is the curve of two X squared minus four X plus five. Okay, do we have any questions about sketching? Yeah, so in case you need to, in case you need some more examples about sketching, can remind me to send some videos which I already did, or which I've already done on my YouTube channel. Okay. So let us look at this one. I think this is the last question we're looking at because this one is a bit long. We we'll just come and start with it maybe for meeting. I don't know, maybe tomorrow we should also meet because I've missed a lot of classes. Yeah, so we'll, start, we'll come and start with this same one here. All right, so let us do this one. So this one says um, the number of viruses in refrigerated water is given by this equation. Then we've been given the range of this T is from negative two to 14, where T is the temperature of the water in degrees Celsius. Find the number of bacteria at zero degrees. So they're saying the number is given by um, 20 T squared, then minus 20 T, then plus 20. Then they are saying we have to calculate the, the number of bacteria at zero degrees. This T, they are saying T stands for, they're saying T stands for the num, uh, I mean the temperature in degrees. So now they are saying at zero degrees. Okay, so I'm saying at zero degrees, at zero degrees. Um, the temperature, meaning the value of T is what <coughs> is zero degrees. So we are finding um, N of zero degrees because they are saying